so you are here for part two of the um, reducing tension in your left hand series of probably just a whopping two videos, whatever, it's part two of two. Um, in the first video we talked about uh, finding the ideal contact point and angle for your instrument um, because you really only need to contact it at one point on your hand. Like my thumb is doing nothing and you can slide your hand freely up and down uh, and your thumb just kind of comes along for the ride. So if you want to go watch that, that's the video for exercises on um, just strictly trying to reduce tension in your left hand and some strategies on uh, how to practice that. This video is going to be based more on the setup on this end of your instrument because I believe that left hand tension comes from insecurity over here. Um, if you don't feel that your instrument is properly supported and secure on this end, you're probably going to want to squeeze it and like jam it into you over here or even if you're not actively like kind of choking yourself with it, if you're not jamming it into you, you could still feel like you have to squeeze a lot over here because this is somehow holding the entire instrument in place because it, it's not secure over here. So there are two things that you can do um, to optimize <laughs> your uh, your security on this end of your instrument and that is your chin rest and your choice of shoulder rest. For me, I don't use a shoulder rest anymore. Um, this is a whole other story, but I have dealt with injury in the past. It was not tension related. It was a repetitive stress injury that just got really, really bad and worse and worse. Um, <laughs> so my my injury was not tension related but i have definitely dealt with tension in the past and i also have a lot of experience dealing with uh different setups on my instrument i listen to my body regularly and see does it want a shoulder rest now <laughs> like sometimes i can play with a shoulder rest totally fine and it's it's very comfortable for me sometimes it's too much here and i don't like it anymore and so i have to get rid of it um it, my setup changes, you know, every few months, kind of. Uh, I've, I'm doing pretty well right now with no shoulder rest on either my violin or viola, uh, but we'll go ahead and talk about shoulder rests anyway. So, uh, I cannot use a traditional hard plastic or metal shoulder rest anymore because of my history with injury. Those actually cause more shoulder pain than they relieve for me. But there are tons of options. Um, the Kuhn is a very standard shoulder rest, um, pretty standard profile for it. Uh, the Wolf, Wolf Secundo is pretty popular. There's like a Mach 1, which I think has a more uh, accentuated profile. And, and the reason I'm doing this is that the shoulder rests, like, they'll they're all mostly designed to fill in the space on this side of the instrument. Like they're all pretty much the same. Like they, they curve up for your shoulder, but the, where they differ is the amount of, um, of, I don't know, stuff that they offer here, the amount of space they will fill on this end of the instrument. Um, and you can go look at those on like char or type in shoulder rests or something and, <laughs> and figure it out. Um, the, the one thing that I don't like so much about shoulder rests is the, the hard plastic ones is that they, you know, they always, it's going to be here. Like it's very kind of difficult to have freedom of movement with your instrument when it is locked into place like that. And that's an idea that I got from my undergrad professor who performed without a shoulder rest and while I was injured, uh, while I was going through treatment for my injury, I was using a Bon Musica and she was like, wow, I, like you look very stiff while you're playing but you're completely relaxed. And the reason that you look very stiff, um, especially with something like a Bon Musica, is that those things like clamp onto your shoulder and it, it fills up all the space right here and your instrument just kind of sits here and you can't really do a whole lot about it. Like it is just like fixed onto your shoulder, which 
was great when I was dealing with injury and I couldn't, I like, it, you know, everything was just a huge mess. Um, the bottom music was a great option for me, but I found out once I was out of the woods and uh, once I was out of physical therapy that anything with a hard plastic or metal backing to it was causing me more pain here. So I had to explore spongy, soft options, which could be just a traditional like cutout piece of foam or whatever. Uh, but what was a huge savior for me was the Acoustagrip. Uh, there's also cosmetic pads uh, as an option, like the little like red sponges or white sponges that you, sh you can use to put on foundation <laughs> or makeup with. Um, you can put those on and you can hold them on with a, uh, with a rubber band. Um, that offers just a little bit of, of um, something to keep the instrument from slipping, which is what I have here. Uh, this is actually one of those things that's meant to stretch over Tupperware containers that you lost the lid for. I got a whole bunch of these from Wish.com and I thought maybe just because I bought the cheap like knockoff brand versions that they didn't work properly, but really it was operator error. I couldn't figure out how to use them for a little while. So I was like, ah, man, what am I going to do with all this stuff that I paid a whopping four bucks for? Um, and <laughs> I now use this, this thing on my violin and my viola because it's got a little bit of texture here and it's just something to keep the instrument from sliding around on my clothing, which is the same thing that the cosmetic pad does. So if you're somebody, if you try playing without a shoulder rest and it's actually quite comfortable except for the slippage, you just need something very low profile uh, on the back side of your instrument. If you need something a little higher, you can try the Acoustagrip, Grip, which is phenomenal. I'm holding it incorrectly because look at this thing, it's so old and wrecked. Like, it doesn't matter if I touch the back of it. Uh, it's, it's beyond saving. Um, it's, it's a pretty soft foam. Uh, it's firm enough that when, when your instrument is here it doesn't collapse, but it's still soft enough that it's not, it doesn't cause any sort of issue for my shoulder. The Acoustic Grip comes in a few different thicknesses. This one here has this little um, white bit of foam down at the bottom, which feels like it's actually a, um, it's a softer foam than the gray foam. It's a softer version, so I don't know, that. Um, this is another version. This is the thick Acoustic Grip that I probably could have gotten with this little white layer of foam, but I didn't bother because it, the thick was thick enough and I knew I was just gonna cut it down anyway. Um, so this is the actual thickness of the thick acoustic grip, and you see that this is much thinner. That's because I shaved this down. I also, uh, if you can see this, I cut away this little corner. I bought the thick one and I played with it fully intact for a while until I figured out where I needed um, to shape it to make it most comfortable for me. So I used this when I first started playing viola because I didn't know how to hold the instrument and I had a side mount chin rest uh, and it was like it was just it was a huge mess um, so I needed or I thought I needed a lot of, of material to fill in the space here the last option for spongy kind of low profile uh, things is the Char magic pad this is a this is like craft foam basically uh, it's it's a way Thicker, it's a more sturdy foam than the Acoustic Grip, and these little things just stick onto your instrument wherever you need them. Um, but if I'm having a flare up in my shoulder, this is still hard enough to um, cause some irritation. So, unfortunately, they come in so many fun shapes and colors, but unfortunately, I can't really use those anymore if I'm having a huge issue with my shoulder because that still digs in and cuts off whatever it is that's making my shoulder angry. Um, so, the Acoustic, acoustic Grip is a great uh, option, personally, because uh, if you get the thick one, then you put it on your instrument and you play with it for a little while, um, and then you can you can customize it. You have enough material here that you can cut some away and and really make it a custom fit for you. And I love the acoustic grip. It it just feels a little too much here. Like I feel like I'm trying to reach up and over onto my viola now, but it's still like it is actually quite nice to have this amount of support here. 
um, for this huge instrument. Um, so, uh, how to explore shoulder rest options because they're expensive sometimes, especially the Bond Music is a $50 piece of equipment, but what if you don't like it? Um, my advice for trying out, this goes for shoulder rests and chin rests, is to ask your friends, maybe ask your teacher if they have some spares lying around. Um, go to a local violin shop, see if they have some options that you could try. Try it before you buy it, if absolutely possible. If not, I think Shar probably has a great return policy that if you get something from them and you don't like it within like 30 or 60 days or something, um, you can return it to them and that will be fine. So that's another option, but it is a great idea if you just have a friend that has a spare shoulder rest, they're like, oh, I hate my Bond Musica, here, just use it, or I'll sell it to you for like 20 bucks or something. Um, I donated all of my old shoulder rests when I found out I can't use them anymore, I just gave them away. Uh, the acoustic grips I keep around though, because that's something that I can still use if that's what my body needs at a certain point. So, shoulder rests, don't be afraid to change them around. Chin rests, also don't be afraid to change them around, but um, let's talk about the options that you have. Uh, sorry, this video is getting quite long, but setup is a lifelong <laughs> fight. It's a lifelong battle for us. So uh, there's two different um, types of mounting you can get. You can get a center mounted chin rest that goes over your tailpiece, or you can get a side mounted chin rest. Um, some side mounted chin rests or they'll have the cup over here, but they have a, a piece that goes across uh, the tailpiece and, and connects over here as well. There's a ton of different styles of chin rest cups, but there are two styles of mounting, center and side. Um, I tend to enjoy the center mounted chin rest style personally because I balance my instrument, I take the middle of my instrument and I balance it on my shoulder up here and so that's where my face needs to go. It can't go over on the side here and I don't like having it way down here where a side mount chin rest puts it. I, my left hand has to do a lot more work and holding it up this way promotes that tension and overworking your left hand. So I really enjoy the center mounted chin rest style. Um, I also enjoy a lower profile um, lip on it, but I can't go completely no profile as I found out when I tried out the cradle um, because I, I need a little bit of something here. I, I used to use this um, SAS chin rest. Uh, they come in a bunch of different sizes, like heights here. They have a little bit of uh, angular, um, like you can, you can select the angle of your cup. Um, uh, with on with on within the um, hardware here you can you can select the angle at which you the cup is most comfortable for you um, but this lip here started to just get a little bit too much for me too much for my jaw uh, in the last couple of months and I didn't know what I was gonna do about it that was an expensive chin rest and I didn't really want to have to buy a whole another one and I had to do a lot of modification to that one already because the what came with it to uh, like what is cork on most um, like the little thing between your chin rest and the instrument cork is usual but for some reason SAS at the time I bought that was using like suede and that was wearing out and the chin rest was slipping around it was a huge nightmare um, <laughs> and cork wasn't working I had done a lot with that chin rest and it got me through a lot of hard times but I my body needed something new uh, and this was at the same time that the cradle company, uh, K-R-E-D-D-L-E, -E, um, had just released this new um, Kickstarter campaign for the cradle cushion, which is their collarbone rest, which I did back, and I'm very excited to be getting that later this year. Um, but one of the options um, on the Kickstarter campaign was that the cradle, company has now come out with a couple of different chin rest plates um, to go on their second version of the chin rest which I have which I hated because it had no profile on it and I thought wow the stars have aligned I can get those here 
Like there's an express shipping option on the chin rest plates and I got them and I'm so happy with it. Um, so all of this is to say, um, check out chin rests as well. Ask your friends if, if they have a version that looks appealing to you, you can find all of the chin rest kinds basically on online. Look at them, see if it, think about how that model would fit on your face and see if that would be comfortable for you. And then if you find one that you like, um, go and ask. If, if you see somebody that has that chin or say, hey, can I, can I put my face on that for a second? Like, can I just hold your instrument for a little while? Because um, I'm interested in your chin rest. And the person would be like, oh, I don't want to give you, oh, I understand the whole setup thing. Yeah, absolutely try out this chin rest. Or uh, if you have a violin shop nearby, maybe go try out uh, a bunch of instruments and, or ask them, do you have instruments with different chin rests on them? Can I try them out? I'm not interested in an instrument. I'm literally like, I'm chin rest shopping and see if they maybe have some spare chin rests, um, some other options. Maybe they sell chin rests separately See if they can put some of those on instruments for you so you can try out the different styles. Um, and then when you're actually happy with it, go ahead, go in for one, go in for the one you want and be aware that maybe it won't work for the rest of your life, but maybe it will, maybe it'll be your Cinderella chin rest. Um, so uh, some advice to teachers. If you have the funds, I'm absolutely not being endorsed by this company, they probably have no idea who I am. Um, <laughs> Buy a cradle chin rest. Do it. Uh, do it for your studio. Oh, sorry, my cat is freaking out. There's a fly in here now. Um, yeah, go ahead and eat the fly. Catch it. Catch it and eat it. I don't know how he got in here, but you should get rid of him. Um, oh my god, he is freaking out and I'm freaking out and I'm distracted. Sorry. Um, cradle chin rests. So, uh, teachers, I think that you should probably, if you've got the funds, um, invest in a cradle chin rest for your studio. If you have a lot of students, I think this is, would be a really uh, a beneficial thing to have because it's the most uh, adjustable chin rest like available at all on the planet. Uh, so. If you get the side mount option, which I, I know I just got through saying I'm a center center mount girl, um, I like the side mount cradle option because it is so adjustable. I can get it over the tailpiece where I like it. Um, whereas if I got the center mount, that was the only place that the chin rest was going to be, right? But if you get the side mount, you can experiment with placement for students. Um, where they need it. Do they need a center mount chin rest? If that's what's most comfortable for them, they can get one. Uh, if they need something more side mount, do they need a tall one? Do they need a short one? Um, do they need a, a cup, a very thick cup? Do they need something low profile? The cradle can be a teaching tool uh, that if you have just one and you can put it on their instrument and you can uh, experiment with all the different angles and styles, uh, the, the three different chin rest plates now, um, then you can help your student find the style of chin rest that is going to work for them. So you're like, oh, you need a center mount flesh chin rest without the bump or something. I don't know, I'm just making up words. Um, you can help them discover what chin rest they're going to need before they drop a whole bunch of money on it and buy one that they don't like. Uh, so also, I mean, if you've got the funds, maybe just go ahead and get a cradle. <laughs> um, having chin rests like this, like a traditional kind of ebony one is great and they, they look great. Um, but by golly, that cradle probably is gonna be the last chin rest you'll ever need to buy because if, if it gets uncomfortable at some point, uh, if that's not what you're playing needs anymore, you don't have to buy a new chin rest. You just need to adjust the one you have. <laughs> uh, then it's just, it's a mind blowing thing. It's phenomenal. So I'm considering uh, buying a cradle for viola, for my viola. Um, and I might also, depending on if I like the cradle cushion that comes out later this year, 
um, I might get a cradle cushion for my viola as well. Um, and if you also play both instruments, you may not be using the same setup on both instruments. Uh, like, I have the cradle on my violin, and I'm, I'm doing all right with whatever generous this is <laughs> on my viola. It's doing okay. Um, but I would be interested to see if a cradle would improve my viola playing and my comfort in my viola playing as well. Um, so that's just a weird little endorsement for a company that has no idea who I am and they don't care. Um, <laughs> but I do really believe in their product, which like Acoustic Grip, between Acoustic Grip and uh, who's also not endorsing me because literally nobody knows who I am. It doesn't matter. I'm not, not YouTube famous. Um, <laughs> Between Acoustic Grip and Cradle, I think um, you can absolutely find the setup that is going to be the best for you because the Acoustic Grip um, is, if you get the thick one, you can cut it down and shape it in any way that you need. And then, um, and then the Cradle is going to take care of everything you need on this side of your life. So that's pretty much the end of this video, I guess. Um, I don't know what I'm doing these days, honestly. Maybe I'm just gonna start making some some random teaching videos like this if it's as beneficial for people. Uh, I mostly only made videos for the students that I teach in schools, but maybe I'll start making some that are applicable to everyone. Uh, for now though, I have to go practice because I have a performance tonight with Annabelle here. We are going to play The Planets. Uh, and there's a few licks in there I would like to look at before we hit the stage. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. I'm sorry that it was kind of long, but seriously, setup is kind of a lifelong struggle for, for us, for all string players. Um, even cellists and bassists, they're going to be dealing with the angle at which they hold their instrument and the style of end pin that they want and the style of rock stop that they use. And like, just set up for our instruments, not even talking about the strings and bridge. Um, just the literal physical kind of tactile things that we, we engage with uh, on a regular basis. It's kind of a never-ending uh, thing. It, it depends on if your body changes, listen to it. If it's not happy anymore, see if there's something you can do to change it, uh, which could be as simple as stop playing with a shoulder rest. Um, or alternatively, if you are playing without a shoulder rest and you have a lot of tension, maybe uh, maybe the reason that you have tension here and you're not using a shoulder rest is because your instrument is sliding all over the place. So um, get something. Uh, this is if this is smooth silicone on one side and then uh, textured silicone on the other. Literally, like I said, it's it's supposed to be um, a Tupperware, like a stretchable Tupperware lid. Um, you can probably find them at Walmart or Amazon. I got mine from Wish.com. Uh, the other option is, I wonder if I have any in here, oh it doesn't look like I do, um, I do have one on my violin, one second and I'll show you what I mean by a cosmetic pad, um, er. so um, this is the setup I use on violin, this cosmetic pad, uh, it's a very thin, just little sponge, clean, unused cosmetic pad, uh, with the um, with the the grippy uh, silicone, because my on my violin, this part of my violin will still sometimes contact my clothing, so I need that grip there, and I notice it's just a little bit more comfortable for me if I have that space filled in right there uh, so figure out what your body needs listen to it and see if you can help it uh, be more comfortable and I, I do apologize for this video being so long one of these days 
I should really write out a script for myself. Um, but for now, I'm just going to stop talking and hope this video helped one person out there. Um, so see you next time.